Hello and welcome to the final video in the Modbus Node Red MQTT video series. In this video I'm going to show you two dashboards. The first dashboard uh, interfaces directly to Modbus and it lets you send commands and receive commands from a, a Modbus TCP IP device. The second dashboard uh, integrates with MQTT so you can actually send and receive the commands uh, to, Node, to Modbus via MQTT. Okay, let's start with the first dashboard. And both dashboards look the same, it's just the fact that this, this one is directly connected to the Modbus uh, Flex getter nodes and setter nodes, whereas the other one uh, interfaces via MQTT. So we have read and we have write, so we can write to Modbus and we can read from Modbus. And I didn't cover coils in the previous videos, but coils are exactly the same as, as registers, except that we're only dealing with one bit. And all you do is set a different function code. You use exactly the same uh, nodes here. So we just use the flex getter here to, to read. And we use the, the write node to write uh, exactly as we did with registers. The only difference is the function code and the values we pass to it. So if we want to read and we're going to read calls here and the code is there one so function code one read a call I don't need the slave IP address I start address two sorry zero and I'm going to read two addresses and I submit it and you can see it comes back here true true false false it actually read eight so even though I said I only wanted two it reads eight it reads a buffer and this is the actual value of the buffer because I've got a one and a one and that in binary is actually three decimal three and if I show you the simulator here you can see here I've got one and one set here the first two uh, coils so let me show you the writing so to write a, a single call I use function code five start address I'm gonna start at three because I'm gonna set the third address I don't need the slave IP I'm going to write 1. The value is 1. Now I could put 1, 2, 3. It doesn't make any difference. It's really is a 0 and 1. 0 is false. 1 is one and above is true. And then I submit it. And if I go to the... Ah, I, I actually did the wrong address. So it's a 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so it's there. Now if I go back and read that this is what I see true true false true which is correct now we can also write multiple values and we can do this with calls and we can do with registers so I'm going to show you with um, coils so this time multiple calls is 15 so I put func function code 15 in here start address 0 so don't need the slave. We're going to write this time. We're going to write. Um, let's write four. And the values we're going to write. We can put them in the values. This time we're going to put them in square brackets. We're going to write zero, which is false. Zero, zero, zero. We're going to write all zeros. So we should have all false going. Let's put the comma there. So we should have. We should see here when we read it. We should see false, 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 false. So let's submit it and let's go and look at the simulator and you can see I've set them all to false. Now we do the same thing but this time I'll do I'll do true so I'll set it to one 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 submit it and go back to the simulator and you can see it's all set to one there so if I was to read it I'd get the same here okay and you do exactly the same with registers and multiple registers uh, using the drop-down box here okay let's just take a quick look at the flow now the, this, the main thing here is this form here so we're actually using a form 
to get the function code, the slave IP address, the start address, and the number of uh, registers or calls to read here. And you can see here that the slave IP is not required. And I'm using the same getter nodes as I used before. Something I did just notice here, um, this block here is not needed and I will delete it uh, when I make this flow available. The main blocks are this one here for reading and the one further down below for writing. Okay, so let's move on to the, the second one. I'm going to disable this one and enable the other one because they use the same user interface. So the dashboard looks exactly the same as the other dashboard except here it just says read MQTT. Now what happens when I enter the data in here and click submit instead of sending it straight into the Modbus node it actually sends it to an MQTT publish and that gets picked up by an MQTT uh, subscribe node and that gets takes the data and sends it into the Modbus node and then the reverse happens on the way back it sends the data publishes the data and I receive it here and display it here and the same when I, I, I write and I'll show you the flow in a second you can see or I've already done it here and you can see here I've got true 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 and this I'm, I was reading a coil and if I show you the values here it's true 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 here on the on the coil Okay, so let's have a look at the flow. So no difference in the form. We've got the form here. And there is a little test node here again, um, which I'll, I will leave in this time. And it sends it into a function node, which sends it out onto MQTT. Now the only difference in this function node and the function node that sends it into the Modbus um, node is this one actually converts it into JSON so we create the command in exactly the same way we when we send the command as it is as a payload in JSON format and we're sending it on Modbus command read that's the topic we're using now the flow is down here that writes it into Modbus or reads it from Modbus you can see I pick up the read here in this topic here I send it into the local getter and then the response from the local getter I set the topic on the response you can see here response read and then I publish it and I do the same on the right except this time the topic I'm using is command right and I send it to the mode bus flex right and publish the response on response right and the response is displayed here for the right and it's here for the for the read so let's see it working now I'm going to overwrite these values here and I'm going to set them all to false so I'm going to use function code 15 to write multiple coils start at 0 num number to use is 4 and these are the values there and I'm just going to submit it Now if I look at it, nothing's happened. Now you find this happens sometimes with this, uh, with this flow. There's no error correction in this and there's no error detection. So what happens if the actual there's an error on the Modbus write or the Modbus read? Well, you have to do it again. Uh, I have developed flows and I'll show you quickly uh, that actually does take this into account and repeats the command if, if it doesn't work the first time. So let's do it again. So this time it's written for and if I look at the thing you can see it's been overwritten here and if I do a read on this you can see it's all false and if I just go back quickly to the flow I'm going to leave all the debug nodes in here this one is actually disabled but it's useful to actually look and you can see the commands coming in if I show you here on the right the topics coming in read that's the last read I did and 
and you can see here the right that's the right I did and there's the response coming back and you can see here the there's been a reset on the mode bus uh, node that gets all the all the uh, the right I'm not sure which one was doing it and then maybe both have done it as I say sometimes you have to read it twice or write it or write it twice for it for it to work and let me just go over here um, this is work I'm doing on on a, a bridge and it's almost ready but not quite ready and you can see here instead of actually just sending the response out I actually uh, work on it and you can see that we test whether it's actually working and if it's not working then we after a delay we inject another the command again I say but that's not quite finished yet and so it's not going to be available for, for download okay uh, you saw how really easy it was to actually integrate this with MQTT we actually did very little work all we needed to do was take the output of the getter or the input for the getter and feed it into a publish or a subscribe node and that was the job done uh, remembering of course to convert it into into JSON format before we did it okay uh, that's the end of the video if you got any comments on the video then please leave them below if you like the video then click on the like button below and if you want to get notified of new videos on the channel then you can subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the notification bell and if you do use social media and would like to share it then please feel free and until next time goodbye